بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم ما بعد عي الله حبت في الله continue on in our study of Imam Muqbil bin Hadi al Wadi Allah يرحمه his treatise entitled هذه دعوتنا وعقيدتنا this is our da'wa, our call, and our creed. We reach the portion of the treaties where Imam Muqbil said, نُؤْمِنُوا بِأَنَّ الْقُرْآنِ كَلَامَ اللَّهِ غَيْرَ مَخْلُوكِ And we believe that the Qur'an is the speech of Allah and it is uncreated. And the Imams of the Salaf have extensively written about this topic and spoken about this topic in their treatise, treatises and in many of the books which are collections of the Salaf al Salih and their narrations. And so this issue has been detailed extensively in Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah Rahmatullahi also has uh, detailed this issue in this matter, and you'll find this, in fact, in many of the Aqidah books, as it is from the creed of Ahl Sunnati wal Jama'ah. And again, it illustrates for us that Imam Muqbil, Rahmatullahi he was from Ahl Sunnah, he was an Imam who espoused Kitab Allah wa Sunnah Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam with the understanding of the Salaf of this Ummah and he avoided bid'ah and spoke extensively and refuted uh, bid'ah, uh, bid'a, you know, heresy and innovation and this is one of the reasons why the Shaykh made bayan here that the belief of Ahl Sunnah which was his belief is that we believe that the Qur'an is the speech of Allah and it is uncreated. And many, especially the Jahmiyyah and some of the other sects, deviant sects, went astray in this area of creed and they claim that the Qur'an was created or as the Ashairah, the Ashiris, they claim that the Qur'an is uh, an ibara or a statement which is a actually statement of Jibreel alayhi salatu wasalam so that it, they try to skirt around the fact that the Qur'an is the speech of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So again, this has to do with their ta'wil with their uh, per making preference, taking preference with their intellect over the nasus of Kitab Allah wa Sunnah to Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and its meaning, its apparent meaning. Instead, they find it necessary in according, accordance with their intellect to uh, explain away these concepts and this is why you have people, as I recently listened to a bit of uh, Hamza Yusuf was saying, he said, yes, Ahl Sunnah, they believe the Quran is a speech of Allah and it's uncreated. So he verified that. Then he went into a very extensive, like a tirade of, uh, and ranting about how this is in one way, this is true, but then there's another way to understand this. And so, again, you'll find that many of Ahl Bida, they rely upon philosophy. And they rely upon their intellectual, ex, ex, uh, their intellectual capacity, which is limited, to understand the Nasus instead of going back to the Salaf and how they understood and by the apparent meaning and what uh, it means in accordance with the Sharia and then if there is no meaning which is apparent as a Sharia term then you return back to the Arabic language 
However, on the bid'ah, you see they find, we find that they have other ways of trying to understand these issues, and this is where they go astray in these, uh, with these concepts. Imam Muqbil also said with regard to this, he said, فَصَحَابَةُ رَضِيَ اللَّهُ تَعَلَىٰ عَنْهُمْ كَانَ يُؤْمِنُوا بِأَنَّ الْقُرْآنَ كَلَامُ اللَّهِ عَزَّ وَجَّلْ مِنْ نَزْلْ مِنْ عِنْدِ اللَّهِ تَعَالَىٰ حَتَّ جَالْ مُبْتَدِعَ وَقَالُوا مَخْلُوكْ فَأَدْتَرَ السَّلَفْ إِلَىٰ أَنْ يَقُولُوا إِنَّهُ غَيْرَ مَخْلُوكْ so Imam Muqbil rahmatullah he said that the Sahaba radiallahu ta'ala majma'in that they believed in uh, that the Quran was the speech of Allah it was the kalam of Allah this is what the, the Sahaba were upon radiallahu ta'ala majma'in in which we should take our understanding uh, in these important aspects of creed or in all in fact all aspects of creed they believed that the Quran was the speech of Allah and that it was revealed from Allah the Almighty and so this was their creed until the innovators came so this is later generations uh, of people like from the Jahmi and so forth who said that the uh, Quran was created that the Quran was created this is what they said and this forced the Salaf to begin to say that it is غير مخلوق, that it is not created. Meaning that these concepts, they came about, this is a very important uh, ibarah, letting us know that often some of the statements that we understand and use that come from the Salaf, they came sometimes as a reaction to what Ahl bidah of that time were claiming. So during the time of the Sahaba radiallahu ta'ala majma'in, there was no one who said that the Qur'an was makhluk, that it was created. Or like the Ashadis claim, no one was saying that it was an ibara of the kalam of Allah or the speed, you know, that it was actually articulated by Jibreel. All of these arguments, these are philosophical arguments that people who were affected by foreign philosophical beliefs and their own uh, intellect was tainted and they began to speculate and think and go beyond the text. This is why Ahl Sunnah is always making reference and the Salaf used to make reference to stopping with the Nasus, stopping with the Salaf. You know, and, and a, a very famous statement that many of the Salaf, that uh, is attributed to the Salaf, Men sabaka bihada qaw. Who preceded you in this statement? So that when you hear these types of statements, uh, you know, very strange ibarat and strange statements in new terms, they would ask, Men sabaka bihada qaw. Who, who said that before you? Which imam from Ahl Sunnah said that before you? to see if that what you said goes back to Dalil and it goes back to the Salaf to the Salaf Asadeh and this is the case that we find so in this uh, statement Imam Muqbil was making it clear that the Sahaba believed and were upon that the Quran was the speech of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it's the divine speech of Allah. And it was uncreated. But then these later groups, they came and they said it was makhluk, that it was created. So this was an innovation of theirs due to their uh, lack of understanding or their philosophical, their being tainted by philosophy or whatever were the, whatever causes caused them to come up with this bid'ah. And then in turn, this forced the Salaf, those early generations that had to deal with these people, that, that these new bid'ahs had, had spread amongst the people, they repelled these uh, bid'ahs, and they refuted these bid'ahs by then beginning to say, 
the Quran is the kalam of Allah, it's the speech of Allah, غير مخلوق. And then they added that ibarah, غير مخلوق, uh, uncreated. So a lot of these, uh, so many of these concepts, and if you look in many of the books of the Salaf, many, uh, you'll find that, you know, they have different ibarat and things, which may have been due to refuting a bid'ah that Ahl bid'ah had come up with. So if the Ashidis had said something and it became widespread, then some of the Salaf, they would say uh, something which would be in something uh, which might be a statement which was not discussed prior to them, but it was in response to the bid'ah of the Ashidis or the bid'ah of whatever sect that came up with this new statement. They came up with a new statement, so the Salafs refuted them by explaining a by explaining and refuting those statements with something that comes from the Quran and the Sunnah, however, it was not used as a uh, a common terminology, and I hope that's clear. And and the classic example is the one we're discussing here that Ahl Bid'ah they said a Quran makhluk that the Quran was created. So then Ahl Sunnah the Salaf Salaf of this Ummah they began to say Al Quran Kalam Allah ghayr makhluk. It is the speech of Allah, which was not created. So before, during the time of the Sahaba, it was not necessary to say uh, it was uncreated, because that was known. It was mafhum. But later generations, because of the bid'ah, from Ahl bid'ah and Ahl Zandaka, wa Ahl Zayd, and those fi uh, those people whose heart was was had a sickness, and Followed the mutashabiha from the ayats that were uh, possibly ambiguous in meaning or had that weren't uh, ayats that dealt with clear rulings and so forth. That these people, because they had a sickness in their heart, because they were tainted, and they began to come up with new, newly invented statements about the speech of Allah and, and about the deen, then Ahl Sunnah responded by refuting those bid'ahs with uh, nusus and with statements which affirm that that bid'ah was bid'ah which refuted the bid'ah of Ahl Zayd. Imam Muqbil said in one of his other books he said وَبِمَا أَنَّ الْمُبْتَدِعَ مِنَ الرُّوَافِذْ وَمَعْتَزِلَ يَنْكِرُونَ عَلَىٰ أَهْلَ السُنَّةِ قولهم إن القرآن منزل غير مخلوق رأينا أن نعقد باب لهذا. so the Sheikh said رحمة الله عليه he said and due to the fact that the people of innovation from the Rafid meaning the Rafid the Shia and the Mu'tazila uh, they denied or they uh, negated and opposed Ahl Sunnah and Ahl Sunnah's statement that the Quran was revealed and it was uncreated so then he said so then we found it necessary to make a chapter regarding this meaning that this affirms that this was the Shaykh's belief which was in accordance with the belief of Ahl Sunnah that the Quran is a divine speech of Allah and it is uncreated and this is why it's dangerous why we have some of our brothers due to their lack of knowledge speaking about areas they shouldn't speak and not stopping where the Salaf stopped the more you speak and the more you speak without ilm the more chances you are you will go astray and the more opportunity you have for making a mistake so some of our brothers now, who are known for da'wah, calling people to, to, to worship Allah alone, especially non-Muslims, because of their lack of Islamic training and their excessive willingness to speak and speak about any topic, halal haram, halal haram, any question they get, that some of them have come up with arguments uh, discussing, well, saying, well, the Quran, this Mus'haf we have before us is not the Quran, so that it is created. Uh, the pen on the paper, you know, coming in and all these things, stop. If you stop, 
you don't get in trouble. Men sabaka bihada kol. Who preceded you in those statements? And if you stop with the self stop, you don't have to worry. You don't even have to reflect on all that stuff. You stop. You say the Quran is the speech of Allah. It's the divine speech of Allah, and it's uncreated. That's enough. It's uncreated. We don't have to go the mushaf because we give ihtiram to the mushaf. The mushaf is the Quran, and we give ihtiram. You see that Muslims everywhere around the world they don't keep the Quran on the floor. They usually put it on the on the top. This is where the ulama recommend put it on the top of your bookshelves, or when it's in the masjid, it's not on the floor. And often they don't even leave the mushaf sitting open. You know all kind of ways to. Uh, preserve it because it is well known that it's the divine speech of Allah and since it's the speech of your Lord subhanahu wa ta'ala then of course it should not be belittled in any way you might step over your own books or your books on geography or your books on philosophy or your books on whatever but that which is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that which is the speech of Allah then you, you, you give it that uh, it's haq, you give it it's right and, and respect and that's because it's the divine speech of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and it's uncreated. The Prophet sallallahu said in a hadith, Yom al ahzab during one of the, uh, during jihad, one of the ghazwat, Allahumma manzil al-kitab, suri al-hisab, ihzam al-ahzab, the Prophet ﷺ made a dua letting us know that the Quran was revealed. Allahumma manzil al kitab. O Allah, the one who revealed the book, letting us know the Quran was revealed and it was not uh, uh, created. And likewise, 